Well, it's taken me a little bit of time to try to figure out how to do some good video recording, but I think I might have it figured out by now. Whether you can see this or not in the future will prove whether I'm right or wrong. So I hope it all goes well. I'm starting to read some stories, and I had been sending them out to folks on drives, but I thought, you know, I can do a little bit better than that. I like reading stories for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's just fun. And probably the second one is that I remember when I was younger how much I enjoyed having someone read a story to me. Not only did my mother and my older sisters read stories to me when I was young, but I remember particularly good memories of my sixth grade year in elementary school. Mrs. McMinn, somewhat of a stern teacher and uh, I don't know. She was just a curious character, but what I remember is that every day after lunch we would always come back to class and she would sit for a half hour or maybe even longer, maybe an hour, while we were doing some of our studies and she would read a story to us. Some quite good books that she read and I just enjoyed sitting there listening to her reading to us and enjoyed those stories. And I love an audio book today. So, I'm going to start reading stories to my friends. This first one is Rabbit and Bear, The Pest in the Nest. And it's particularly geared towards my grandchildren, for the younger folks, Aubriel, Adam, Austin, Caleb, and Amaya, and my little friend Sienna in Vider, Texas. I think you guys will all enjoy this very much. But if any of you older folks just enjoy a good story, I think you're going to like this one too. So, here goes. Rabbit and Bear, the Pest in the Nest. First of all, I'm going to show you some of the pictures up front. Hold hold still long enough to where you can see. Can you find the bear's den, the rabbit's hutch? And over here somewhere there's something about some snookums and some monsters or something and other nice things. So maybe you can pause the video and have a look at this map for a few minutes. Okay. Rabbit was having a lovely sleep in his friend Bear's cave when a terrible noise awoke him. Oh no, thought Rabbit. Thunder! Oh, he opened his eyes. The cave was full of light. Oh no, thought Rabbit, lightning. But the light was just sunshine coming into the cave. And the loud noise was just Bear snoring very loudly. Rabbit tried to cover his ears with his paws, but his ears were very big and his paws were rather small. Oh, this is impossible, said Rabbit and hopped out of Bear's cave. I forgot to show you the picture on the first page. Pretty surprised rabbit, huh? Here he is on the next one. Outside, the winter snow was gone, except for two teeny tiny piles of old and very tired snow. On each pile rested two pine cones, a curved stick, and a carrot. Our snowmen have melted, thought Rabbit. And then he had a thought, so big that it filled him up, so he had to stand on his tiptoes and push out his chest. Spring has sprung, thought Rabbit. At last, time to go to his burrow. He had enjoyed a cozy winter with his friend Bear, but that snoring was driving him nuts. Rabbit hopped down Bear's big hill and up Rabbit's little hill. Hmm, he thought. His burrow looked a bit scruffy after the winter. Better do some spring cleaning, thought Rabbit, and hopped into his burrow. Oh, his burrow was really scruffy. 
lots of twigs, old leaves. Rabbit scooped out the mess with his paws to reveal. Hmm. Some big rock? The root of a tree? Wait a minute. It had eyes. I'm going to show you this, but I'm not going to give you the next page. There. You see that? Yeah, you see seeing something in there with eyes. and shouted Rabbit so loudly that it hurt his ears. It's a snake! I don't think it's a snake. The two little eyes popped open and looked straight into Rabbit's eyes. Hello, Rabbit, said the animal incredibly slowly with a long sigh. Whew, it wasn't a snake. It's just you, Tortoise, said Rabbit. Get out. I want to be alone. You're not a very nice rabbit. Is it next year already, said Tortoise? Yes, said Rabbit, and it's already far too noisy. And it's already, oops, I already read that. Peace and quiet, he shouted. That's all I want. Ouch, he had hurt his own ears again. Sounds like Rabbit's kind of grumpy. Yeah, I kind of kind of sympathize with Rabbit. I get grumpy too when I wake up. All right, Rabbit, said Tortoise, and walked out of the burrow so slowly. Rabbit thought that he would go mad waiting. Tortoise finally got all the way outside and fell asleep at once out in the sunshine. Whew, said Rabbit and sat on the sleeping tortoise. Rabbit stretched in the sunshine. Ah, peace and quiet. And I've got to hold the other page there. That's pretty silly, him sleeping on the tortoise, huh? Bing, 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 bing! Oh, Rabbit jumped so high he scared himself. Rabbit was afraid of heights. Gee, I wonder what that banging noise is. Oh, my nerves, he said when he had landed again. He looked all around, but he didn't see anything. Bing, 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 bing! Oh, my. Rabbit looked down. Nothing. Rabbit looked up. Something. What on earth was that? Bear, shouted Rabbit. Bear, come here. Something simply has to be done. Oh, poor Rabbit. Bear wandered down the hill from her cave, rubbing her eyes with a big paw. Look, said Rabbit, and pointed straight up. Bear looked. Sorry, she said. I can't see very well. Looks like a blur. It is a blur, said Rabbit, all the way up near the top of the tree, a green, green blur. You know what that blur was doing? Bang, 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 Big barts of bar bits of bark fell down and landed on Bear and Rabbit. My fur, said Rabbit, shaking off the bits of bark. This is completely impossible. Far above them, the blur finally stopped banging. Suddenly, it wasn't blurry anymore. Do you know what that blur is up there, guys? I bet you do. It's a bird, said Bear. It's a pest, said Rabbit. Hey, 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 hey. I'm a wood, 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 woodpecker. Woodpecker shouted down at him. I'm not a pest. I eat pests. She licked Wrigley beetle grubs out of the hole in the tree with a long, sticky, spiky tongue. Wow, 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 said the explorer. These are delicious. Ha, 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 ha. Why, shouted Rabbit, are you laughing? I think I kind of like woodpecker. Because I'm 
Happy, 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 said Woodpecker and began to peck the wood again. Bang, 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 bang. How lovely, said Bear. We've never had a woodpecker in the valley. Lovely. She's so noisy and happy. It's driving me crazy, said Rabbit. Oh, look at poor Rabbit. Indeed, the new arrival was so noisy that Tortoise awoke. He stood up. Rabbit fell off. Hey, said Rabbit. Hello again, Rabbit, said Tortoise. Is it next year again? Already? No, said Rabbits. It's only five minutes later. Oh, said Tortoise with another sigh. How sad. I'm a hundred years old, you know, or possibly a hundred and one. And Taurus fell back asleep. Ah, he's driving me crazy too, said Rabbit. But Tortoise is sad and quiet, said Bear. Yes, and he's driving me crazy. Bear thought about this. So noisy, happy, things drive you crazy? Yes, replied Rabbit. And quiet, sad things drive you crazy? Yes, yes, said Rabbit. Looks like Bear's doing some thinking. Bear thought about this some more, but the only thing those have in common, she said, scratching her head, is you. Rabbit gave Bear a look. So? Well, said Bear, I think the creature that is driving you crazy isn't Woodpecker, and it isn't Tortoise. It's, um, Bear didn't want to say it. Rabbit had a rather fierce temper. It's you. Isn't it, Bear, said Rabbit, and raised his right foot to kick Bear. Uh, no, said Bear. It's you. Hmm. I'm driving myself crazy, said Rabbit. Shocked, he raised his left foot to kick himself, but he had forgotten to put his right foot back down first. So he fell over. Yes, said Bear, you see, your brain is getting into a fight with the world. I'm not getting into a fight with the world, said Rabbit, standing up. Not! Rabbit raised his foot again to kick Bear. Hmm, thought Rabbit. Rabbit. Bear is very big. Maybe not. <laughs> Probably a wise choice, don't you think? So Rabbit kicked Tortoise instead. Uh, it was like kicking a big sleepy rock and it hurt his foot a lot. Ow, said Rabbit. Hmm, said Tortoise, and quietly fell back to sleep. Woodpecker pecked. Bang, 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 bang. Arg, said Rabbit. Everything's driving me crazy, especially her. And Rabbit picked up a pine cone and threw it straight up at Woodpecker. Where do you imagine that pine cone's gonna go? Hmm, I have my guess. Now, rabbits are not great at throwing things, and the pine cone missed Woodpecker, and it fell straight back down and hit Rabbit in the eye. Ow, said Rabbit, look what she just did. I don't think bears fall one along, do you? Mm -mm. Bear thought she had better do something before Rabbit exploded. Uh, Woodpecker, Bear shouted up the tree, if you could peck more quietly, then it would take much, much, much longer, shouted Woodpecker, who found it very hard to stop once she had got, had got going. Much, much, much. Hmm. Uh, yes, shouted Bear, I understand. Okay, so if you could peck faster then, perhaps, and get it over with? Stop shouting, shouted Rabbit. 
can't peck any faster than this, shouted Woodpecker, pecking to demonstrate. Bang, 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 bang. I can't do it either. Her head became a green blur again. Uh, yes, shouted Bear. I understand. Woodpecker stopped pecking and looked around. Wow, what a view, she shouted. I'm going to love, love, love it here. There must be one somewhere, said Rabbit, looking around. What are you looking for, said Bear. What are rabbits looking for? A rock. A big one. To throw at that woodpecker menace. Uh, why don't we help her instead, asked Bear. Help her? Yes, help her. Help her drive me crazy, said Rabbit. What kind of friend are you? No, said Bear. Help her finish her job faster, though she, so she doesn't drive you crazy. That sounds like a good idea to me. No way, said Rabbit. Well then, said Bear, I will. And Bear began to climb the tree. Traitor, said Rabbit. Bear stopped climbing and scratched her head. What's a traitor, she asked. A traitor, said Rabbit, glaring up at Bear, is someone who leaves a friend to help an enemy. Bear sighed. I really don't think Woodpecker is an enemy. Rabbit, just let me go up and see. I wonder what Rabbit's going to do with that stick. Hmm. Bear was rather good at climbing trees because she practiced a lot, looking for honey. Mm. The world quickly got bigger and brighter and lighter and airier the higher Bear climbed, and Bear's problems seemed to get smaller and smaller and less important and farther away. Hmm. Hello, Woodpecker, said Bear quietly when she had reached the top. Are you an enemy? No, 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 said Woodpecker, shaking her head. I'm just trying to make a hole in this tree for my nest. Ah, said Bear. Well, that's going to take you a while, one little peck at a time. Let me help you. Sure, said Woodpecker, and moved politely along the branch. I wonder how Miss, or Miss Bear is going to help. Bear stretched out her claws until they were as long as possible and scraped away at the hole with all her strength. But the wood was very hard, and she couldn't hardly scratch it. Oh dear, said Bear. I'm afraid you're better at this than I. Practice, 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 said Woodpecker. You get very good at something if you do it all the time. True, said Bear, and looked around. What a view! It does look like a nice view, doesn't it? Woodpecker went back to work with her incredibly hard beak, as sharp as a chisel. Bear sighed and began to climb back down. Please stay a while, said Woodpecker politely. Well, I don't want to be in your way, said Bear. Bear. And also, uh, it's very loud right beside you. How many of you have heard of woodpecker in a tree? Remember when we lived in a log cabin in Idaho, we had a woodpecker that was working on the house, and that was kind of loud until we encouraged it to go somewhere else. Oh, I'm taking a break, said woodpecker, to stretch my neck. It gets stiff. I thought I'd skip the page there. Oh, good, said Bear. Rabbit, she shouted down. You should come up here. You would love it. It would be very good for you. Hmm. I wonder how Rabbit's going to get up in that tree. You're crazy too, shouted Rabbit. Rabbits don't climb trees. If you think I'm going to climb that tree, you're more nuts than a million acorns. Are you happy down there, shouted Bear. 
Rabbit wanted to shout, yes, just to annoy Bear, but deep down Rabbit was an honest rabbit. No, he said very quietly. Bear climbed all the way back down the tree. Pardon, said Bear. No, said Rabbit a bit more loudly. I'm not happy. Well then, let me give you a lift, said Bear. Hang on tight. Rabbit grabbed Bear's thick fur and hung on tight while Bear climbed back up the tall, tall tree. Are you scared? asked Bear when they reached the top. No, said Rabbit. Uh, have we left the ground yet? <laughs> Bear looked over her shoulder. Rabbit's eyes were tightly shut. Silly Rabbit. Bear chuckled. Look, she said, and Rabbit opened his eyes. Wow, he said. That's what I always say, said Woodpecker. Wow, 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 wow. I think Woodpecker repeats herself a lot. That is beautiful, isn't it? Hey, said Rabbit. Mountains. Way. There are mountains behind the mountains. And his rabbit eyes were having trouble even focusing that far away. There are mountains behind the mountains, behind the mountains. The tree swayed in the wind and rabbit swayed with it. Rabbit felt like he was part of the tree and the tree was part of the forest and the forest was part of the world. It's nice, 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 isn't it? Said Woodpecker. Wow, said Rabbit very quietly. I thought the world was small and full of me. But it isn't. It is big and not full of me at all. Yes, said Bear. Yes, 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 said Woodpecker. Maybe my problems are not so big after all, said Rabbit. I think you're right, said Bear. They climbed back down. I don't understand, said Rabbit. I feel calm and happy. Me too, said Bear, but then I usually do. Rabbit looked up at the tree. I can't believe I have learned wisdom from a bird with a brain the size of a walnut, he said. A brain that it bangs off a tree all day. I don't think you found wisdom in the woodpecker, said Bear. Ah, I found it in you, Bear, said Rabbit, and hugged Bear. No, said Bear, Bear, you found it in you. This is great, said Rabbit. Now I'll be calm and happy forever. He lay down in the sunshine, totally relaxed, and put his feet up on Tortoise, who was still asleep. I wonder what it's like to hug a bear. Maybe not forever, said Bear, who knew Rabbit rather well, unless you practice. Nonsense, said Rabbit. I've changed forever. At the top of the tree, Woodpecker finished her break and fluffed up her feathers and started digging the hole for her nest again. And we know what that means, more noise, right? Bang, 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 bang. Rabbit jumped twice his own height again. Ugh. What? asked Bear. I'm angry, and I want to be calm. So I'm angry that I'm angry, said Rabbit. Kicked himself and fell over. Why did you kick yourself? Because I'm annoyed with myself, said Rabbit, because I can't change myself. But you can change your thoughts, said Bear. I think maybe Rabbit was expecting to change too quickly, huh? Change my thoughts? What's wrong with them? 
My thoughts are perfect, said Rabbit. But your thoughts are making you unhappy, said Bear. No, said Rabbit, the world is making me unhappy. I must change the world. Hmm. A little cloud passed in front of the sun. Rabbit threw a stone at it. Stupid world, change. But the world didn't change. Maybe you could just think about the world differently, said Bear. Maybe you could accept it. Accept? Accept, said Rabbit. What's that mean? Saying, well, that's just the way it is, said Bear. Not try to change it. No, said Rabbit. Rabbit seemed so certain. Maybe Bear was wrong. Maybe Rabbit was just too different from Bear. And Bear was being silly. Bear looked down at her feet, a bit embarrassed. Then she noticed her feet were doing something odd. So were rabbits. Bear's feet and rabbit's feet were tapping the ground in rhythm with the woodpecker's pecking. Hmm. Look at those feet tapping. Look at your feet. Look, your feet have already accepted it, said Bear. Traitors, Rabbit shouted at his feet. But his feet kept tapping. I think your body and your mind are divided, said Bear, whose body and mind were not very often divided. Of course they are, said Rabbit. My mind is up here, being clever, and my body is down there, being stupid. I don't want my lovely mind to have anything to do with my stupid body. Thump, 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 thump. Look at that foot going. And you can't stop it. <laughs> now, I think that is where you might be going wrong, said Bear. Wrong, wrong, me wrong, shouted Rabbit. What did you learn up in the tree, said Bear. Oh, yes, said Rabbit. He remembered swaying in the branches of the treetop, a very small rabbit in a very big world. Wow, he said, remembering. And he stopped fighting the world, and he stopped fighting himself. And in that moment, he accepted everything. Hmm. Sounds like rabbit had a little bit of an epiphany. That's what we call when somebody learns something new especially about themselves. Wow, 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 said, Rub said Rabbit. Bang, 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 said Woodpecker. Thump, 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 said Rabbit's feet. <sniffs> said Tortoise. And together they all made music, and it was beautiful. And Bear was so happy to see her friend look so happy that she began to sing. She made up the words as she went along. Spring, she sang, spring is a wonderful, thunderful, thunderful thing. It's also tongue-tying. There was a tiny growl of thunder from that little cloud. Next time around, she sang, spring, spring is a wonderful, thunderful thing. Soon it would rain and the plants would begin to grow and the spring would have sprung. But right now they were dancing and their minds and their bodies were one. And first mole, then mouse, then bowl, and one by one all the animals of the forest came out to dance to the amazing music. Why, I hope Bear doesn't step on any of them. Bear's awful big and they're, they're rather small down there, aren't they? The sun came out from behind the cloud and Bear sang, Spring is a wonderful, thunderful thing. Bang, bang, wow, wow, thump, thump. <sighs> Bear shared the food she had stored in her cave. She even fed Wolf so that Wolf wouldn't get hungry and eat the other dancers. <laughs> that would not be good. Maybe you want to pause here again and see how many animals you can find in this picture.
looks like they're dancing into the night. And they danced and feasted all day long until it was dark, and Woodpecker was finished pecking a hole in the hard wood of the tree. Wow, said Rabbit yawning, that was the best party ever. Yes, said Bear yawning. I don't want it to be over, said Rabbit. I hate silence. I want Woodpecker to keep going all night, all tomorrow, all week, forever. Well, said Bear sleepily, now that the hole is finished, the nest will soon be full of little woodpeckers, and they will grow up fast and need somewhere to live. More woodpecking, more parties. You're right, said Rabbit sleepily. Good night, Bear. Oh dear, said Tortoise, is it that time already? It will take me ages to get home. That's okay, said Rabbit, you can sleep in my burrow with me. And soon Bear was asleep in her cave, and Woodpecker was asleep in her nest, and Tortoise was asleep next to Rabbit in Rabbit's burrow. Snores, said Bear loudly in her cave. Down in his burrow, Rabbit heard Bear snoring and started to get angry out of habit. <laughs> Poor Rabbit. But the snoring wasn't really very loud. Hmm, maybe I should think about it in a different way, thought Rabbit. Yes, I shall stop thinking of, it, thinking of it as a nasty noise. I shall think it instead of as a nice, friendly reminder that my friend Bear is nearby. And suddenly the sound, without changing at all, made Rabbit feel all happy and warm. Yes, spring is a wonderful thing, thought Rabbit, and tomorrow is, is going to be a beautiful day with my old friend Bear and my new friend Woodpecker. Yes, tomorrow is, is, and Rabbit fell into his deepest, calmest sleep ever. Wonder what the forest sounds like with everyone snoring together, huh? story of bear and rabbit and the pest in the nest. I can sympathize with rabbit sometimes, and sometimes all the noise isn't the best to hear, but having your friends around and hearing their noises is. I hope you've enjoyed the story. I'll try to get some more ready for you soon. <laughs>